How's that for a nice pause? Um, evening, everybody. Today we are going to chat a, quite a bit about Cynthia Williams stepping down from Wizards of the Coast as president. I have the actual SEC filing. I'll bring that up on the screen here in a little bit. But first, I want to introduce the two panelists I have tonight. We may be joined with more a little bit later, but currently we have John from Dragons and Flagons. And I'll tell you something pretty special about him and why he's on this panel here in just a minute. We also have Bear from Zenith Comics. Now, both of you, um, I know, have some very strong opinions about Wizards of the Coast. I do as well. Um, <laughs> And that's kind of what I want to explore today. But first, before we do, um, I want to jump in and, and tell everybody exactly what has happened, if you haven't heard already. So Cynthia Williams is the, or was, the president of Wizards of the Coast. She is the one that is attributed to having been said um, that Dungeons & Dragons is not monetized enough. Uh, under her leadership, we saw a $1,000 Magic the Gathering booster uh, to celebrate Magic the Gathering's 50th anniversary. We saw the uh, OGL fiasco happen. We saw a countless number of, uh, well, actually, I'll talk about that one in just a second. We saw Pinkertons go to a YouTuber's house. We saw, uh, well, the we saw several almost 2,000 people furloughed from mm -hmm. her command. Um, and that's exactly why I have John on here right now, because he was one of those. He used to Ooh. work in Watsi. Ooh. I did. And, and yep. John, I, I'm going to assume that you didn't actually have any day-to-day uh, -day interaction with Cynthia Williams. No, uh, not on a regular basis. Um, and let me know if I'm too loud or if you get car noises. I, to be honest, I was really excited when you sent me this because I didn't hear this news. I've been at work all day, so that's why I'm on the car. Um, yeah. But yeah, I did not have any day-to-day -day interaction with her, but I'd say monthly, maybe every six weeks, she would have some little presentation and, and talk to the entire organization. And uh, I do want to correct one little thing. While there was mm -hmm. 2,000 people furloughed in December, there was also the February before then, there right. was another, I think it was 15% of all of Hasbro, including Wizards. And then right. I got caught up in a June layoff as well. Uh, I thought I'd dodge the bullet in February and got caught in June. And then another one happened in December and it's just terrible. She no. drove that whole thing into the ground. I, I can't blame her more. <laughs> yeah, I, well, and that's that's one of the big reasons I wanted to have you on. Um, have you kept in touch with anybody else from your days working there? I have. Um, there's a few people that are still employed there. Um, obviously, I'm not going to name any names. Sure. No, um, I wouldn't I, expect I, it. Yeah. And, uh, they're in various departments on the D&D side as well as the magic side. Um, and then lots of contact with uh, people that were laid off with me and then after me, um, chatting either through LinkedIn, uh, trying to help them find a, a new gig or right. uh, people that have landed somewhere. And we just stayed close because the people, I mean, I no matter what comes out of my mouth here, the people were amazing. Um, the the organization as a whole, I love the products and all that stuff, but and the people were fantastic, but the leadership is really what is what soured my my taste of, of wizards. I get that completely. Um, now, Bear, before we jump into you, I, I'm going to share this with everybody because um, I'd like to get your comment on this too. Uh, so this is a copy of what was filed uh, two days ago on the 15th, um, the United States Security and Exchange Commission, otherwise known as the SEC. This is something that Hasbro had to file. Um, this was done, uh, again, you can take a look at everything on here, but it's the second page that I really, that, that this is where the breaking news, this is what everybody, all the news uh, outlets are reporting. I think even Forbes is reporting on this right now. Um, item 5.02, departure of directors or certain officers, election of directors, appointment of certain officers, compensatory arrangements of certain officers. And then it states, 
On April 15th, 2024, Cynthia Williams, president of Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro Gaming, informed the company of her resignation from the company, effective April 26th, 2024. The company is conducting a process to identify her successor, looking at both internal and external candidates. So Barry, you could be, uh, you could be president of Watsi. No, I have feelings. <laughs> I just like that when I lose a job, I get two weeks' notice in the severance. These assholes who ruin things with their, their corporate greed, their corporatism, which is the dark side of capitalism. Again, those will all fight you on this hill, anyone. Capitalism good, corporatism bad. Uh, they basically have to have government filings and news articles written about them while they get a golden parachute on the way out the door. Mm -hmm. and they screw everything up. This woman was at... Amazon, she's responsible yep. for the Amazon's growth. She's the person that shepherded them into this age that they're in. She was at Microsoft for 10 years. Yep. And I worked tangentially for Microsoft for four years. And to be honest, yeah. And then now she she sweeps into something that she has no skill set for. And this this is not her. This is Chris Cox. Let's let's just keep this in mind. Sociopaths hire sociopaths. That's the way it works. Sociopaths don't like people who have feelings. And I've worked with many sociopaths sure. in my life. They don't like people who have feelings because they make them uncomfortable because they don't understand what why why are you acting like this? They don't get it. All they want is their own self survival. And they also hire people that they can cut or they can throw under the bus. Right. Or they can yes. put up to pasture whenever they want to. And because sociopaths, oh God, you have an accident? <laughs> mm, Jesus. Hi, hey, child person. Is that a child? Hi, whoever that is. Um, I was picking up because, my daughter. Sorry. <laughs> well, hi, your daughter. Uh, because they, um, I had a thought and I thought you were hurt. And then my thought expired. Sorry. Um, Sorry. No, no, it's okay. Um, let, let's just leave it at they are bad at what they do, but because they make money on the general rule, because of their willingness to make cuts and lay off. 3,000 people and what have you and all that Christmas Eve if they can before the quarter closes in you know January or whatever it is they get promoted higher and higher and higher and higher up the corporate food chain and now we are living in a world that they run and they sadly, get promoted up to their highest level of incompetency yes this is the Peter principle they get yes. they get promoted past their point of incompetence of competence. yes That's yes the thing. yes they get promoted to incompetence where they they're too expensive to get rid of so they just sit there causing problems until they get a golden parachute and fucking leave. <laughs> so these twats, pardon my French, well, it's British, but whatever, uh, are the bane of our entire society. Now that I know there's a child listening, I'm going to be very oh, you're fine. She's about what I say. <laughs> uh, and uh, you know what? May this be the first of many that get the F out of our hobby and take a yes. walk down the gold breaker lane and go screw up some other industry, please. Yep. I mean, listen, I, I'm, I'm all for a company company making money. You know, a, yeah. a, a company has to be able to make money to survive. I get that. But the the level of greed that came about under Cynthia Williams uh, rule, uh, for lack of better words, um, it, 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 it was very shameful to this hobby. It was very shameful to the brand. Um, you, you know, I mean, even looking for, I, I still can't get over the Magic the Gathering 50th anniversary uh, where they attempted to charge, you know, a thousand dollars for an a, unplayable. A it was unplayable. Unplayable. Not only is it a thousand dollars for a booster pack, you can't use it, it in your tournament play. It was only 12 cards. <laughs> what, right, what, right. What, what bloody nonsense. What absolute yeah. stupidity. And, and Eric states, you know, greed is different than sustenance. And, and yeah, I mean, greed is different than sustenance. But there is a there is a point, and I think Wizards surpassed that point when they became a multi-billion dollar brand and then turned around and tried to cry poor mouth that D&D &D was under monetized. No, that's 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 not that's <laughs> that that does go beyond sustenance that goes into the realm of uh, we want greed. our hands and fingers in your wallets. You know, that, that is greed. So, John, okay. um, yeah. sorry, hang on. Yeah. As much as I hate to quote the other franchise that I once loved that has been destroyed by these types of morons, these people exist in the world of sheer fucking hubris. 
Yes. And, this is the and they never get their comeuppance. And there's always some other asshole sociopath out there that's willing to give them a job as soon as they leave, or they get into media, or they get into government, or they become politicians. These people, this is what they meant when they said, eat the rich. These are the ones we're supposed to eat. And she's, well, she's plump. She'll cook up nice. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> well, so, and John, here's, here's the question that I've got for you. The way I see this, there's only, I, I only see one of two possibilities. Either she left of her own volition or she was encouraged to resign. Can you think, question I have for you is, can you think of a third possibility? Uh, no, I can't think of a third one, but I do think it's the latter. I think she was probably asked to leave um, at that level. There is a a respect among the peers at that level uh yes for some reason somehow some way she's earned her way up to that title whether or not she deserves it that's above my pay grade but um i think at that point you are respectfully voluntold you're leaving you've got two weeks or one month or whatever it is and you're severanced out i mean she's not going to be broke uh, she already had a hell of a salary but now with the bonus and the severance and all the other things just to, to walk out the door. She's got even more. Do you this think that they, too, obviously, no yeah, no, it's, everything that we're talking about is, is speculation aside from, yeah. aside from the SEC filing that I showed, you know, just a few minutes ago. Um, that is fact. I mean, that, that is pulled directly yeah, from Hasbro's website. Um, the, uh, her, her brings up a third possibility that she was given a better deal elsewhere. And I, you know, that, that very well could be, um, and to both of you, in fact, I'm going to add in, uh, we've got another, another panelist coming in. This guy likes to hey, give me all, Gotham and Rome. Gotham and Rome. He, he likes to give me all kinds of crap in the comments. Um, uh, but it's really fun to talk to you. Uh, okay, and before, before he goes, I have yeah. a fourth possibility, Okay, which is the eclipse mark the end of her arcane ritual for this portion of her <laughs> demonic life. That's a good one. And she has now been recalled to hell to find her next assignment. <laughs> that's a good one. We're going to go with that one. I, I think that's uh, that, that wins the like that. on this for today. Um, so I my question for everybody, uh, all three of you there, how long do you think Hasro has actually known about this? Or do you do you buy that it was actually, she actually told them on April 15th, Monday, this past Monday, two days ago? I, I agree with John 100%. No, this know. was a voluntold situation. This Voluntary. was, you're leaving, you've got one month to get all your stuff in order because we just spent a month running the numbers on how much it's going to cost us to get you gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah there's no, no way, way hell she just stopped it. Free will. No way. Yeah, I mean, no corporation would take her if she had done that, right? If she had turned around and just dropped this in Watsi's lap, she officially becomes toxic in the corporate world. Right. She becomes someone unreliable. So they can't. Well, I mean, them. especially of 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 making the kind of money that she's making to give them a ten day or an eleven day notice. You know, I mean, now Goth and Rome. So here, yeah. here's a specific question for you. Um, you are. You, you have a lot of good knowledge about business, the world, uh, how, how business works in the world. In with with somebody of her stature and position, being a, a, a president of Wizards of the Coast, a, a, you know, a, a multi a, a billion dollar entity. When somebody of that stature is hired in, do they not usually have like a five year contract at minimum? I, usually at minimum, uh, the only exceptions really would be if a company is struggling, they need short-term assistance with a very specific problem. They bring in that person to serve that role for a very short period to uh, right the ship for a specific problem, and they are going to have a very nice golden parachute yeah. where uh, she yeah. was promoted from within likely is not that is not the case they knew what right. skills that she, had. I thought she, was, she was promoted from within i thought she was headhunted from microsoft no she was headhunted from microsoft she yeah. was headhunted from microsoft but she yeah. was already to my understanding with wizards at the time when maybe John, i'm mistaken there. is this true hmm. uh, I, I do remember that. her um i do remember her come about uh, her coming from microsoft 
and somebody the organization that could no, I'm sorry, yeah, John, we're, 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 going, we're yeah. going to have to go back to Gaunt and Rome. We'll rejoin you in a moment, sir. For, I, I'm not in charge here. Don't mind me. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just letting people run. I mean, <laughs> for some reason, I thought she had been sniped from Microsoft, but she was already with Watsy for a short period before. Yeah, but it could have been just the way they brought her in. Like they do a that lot is, of sneaky shit like that. Yeah, it could be. Oh, that is perfectly yeah. possible. You know, and Very again, I mean, this is, this is, Every, everything that we're talking about, again, it's all speculation. I mean, you know, I, I, I don't have any hardcore facts uh, one way or the other. But the bigger question that I have for you guys, and I, I already have my answer. I know the answer to this one. Do you think that this is going to mark a change in Wizards of the Coast? Hmm. I, I don't. don't. The I'll go on the record. Would... I don't think anything's going to change. I really don't. No. And there's about I, five more people that got to go. I, exactly. I, I don't think it's going to change unless more people go. That I for think, or, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. I, I think that um, this might actually be related to some other current events that have been going on. Uh, one of the major events that has happened recently that has uh, sort of, it has to have no doubt caused a lot of meetings across the entertainment world is you did recently have the Disney shareholders meeting. They right. did vote to keep Bob Iber, Iger, and their stock has since continued to plummet. Yep. So mm -hmm. that's... Uh, DEI and, and WEF money and BlackRock money has been drying up, and these companies suddenly realize that they've been so heavily invested in taking outside funding as opposed to money from their audience that they're learning the hard way they don't know how to please their audience anymore. And as a result of that, their shareholders are going, you people are clearly incompetent, and that's causing huge problems. So we're in a real spiral in the corporate world right now. And this is something we saw starting in 2008 as the biggest warning. And it, as they did at the time, and we all talked about it at the time, was the kicking of the can down the road. Well, we're down the road now, people, and the can's right. still there, and you, your shoe's got holes in them, and there's jagged edges on it. Good fucking luck. <laughs> well, at this point, the can is, is you know 15 feet behind them. They well, no, the can was run over by an 18 wheeler, so it's just a flat oh, piece yeah. of tin <laughs> on the <laughs> ground. So, taking a look at uh, Hasbro stock today, I mean, it's it's dropped 21 cents. No, nah, I mean that that's not a major drop. That's um, huge. No, I mean it's huge, but it's it's an average. You know, I mean okay. it's it's if you take a look, uh, you know, it started out the day. Well, let's take a look at the five day history of it. Um, it started out 56 dollars. Actually, it's yeah. Over the past five days, it's dropped about two dollars so mm. that is pretty big and guess what happened two days ago someone uh, filed the paper someone filed an sec yeah mm. <laughs> we were so, you know, guessing <laughs> well i mean goth goth nailed it i mean it's it's you know look at what what's happening with disney stock and you know you, you may be more right than you are wrong here i mean that's it's uh hasbro has touted a Oh, like a what a dollar twelve payoff uh, per dividend, yes. um, somewhere around that ballpark. Um, I can I tell don't you, I think it's. I don't think it's going to make it. It was sixty cents uh, biannual or twice a year. Yeah, to my understanding, and it was a certain percentage, which was which is determined ahead of the time period that it's paid. So I think the first one is fixed. And then the next one might be more or less, but it is fixed on that same percentage. Yeah. And and that's the bottom line. Money talks, bullshit walks. And mm. did she make a lot of money for uh, Wizards and Hasbro? No. Uh, well, I don't know. I think she did. That I, monopoly, I think that the Monopoly the, Go thing was entirely her, to my understanding, and that was $2 billion of yeah. basically yeah, free one, profit. One success out of all the other successes. How much money has Hasbro lost overall under her? Oh, Hasbro has, yeah, Hasbro itself has lost quite a bit. I mean, if you if you take in all of their overstock that they've had in in warehouses across the United States, globally for that matter, if you look at uh, uh, the amount, re, yeah, recalled products, um, mm -hmm. and even just bad press. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's there's, I, I'm looking at it strictly from a monetary point of view, not not necessarily from a uh, from a um, 
uh, all-encompassing point of view. Um, yeah, see, I look at it from an all-encompassing point of view because I spent enough time in corporations to learn that's what matters. It, it, the 3% you are the 3 exactly. matters more than the 97. So 3% negative matters so much more than the 97% positive. And I've dealt with right. that in many jobs right. I've had where it's been like, well, there's a trend. What are you talking about a trend? The trend's 97% positive. What do you care about 3%? But that's the way their brains work, right? Yeah. So she may have made them a couple of billion dollars with Monopoly Go, but she lost them a shit ton of money with Watsy. You know uh, what I mean? Yeah, I think it I, was. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, every time I start a new company, if they're, if they're publicly traded, I buy one share on Robinhood. I'm not trying to promote Robinhood or whatever, but um, so I ha I bought my one share of Hasbro stock. It was ninety four dollars, and now it's like fifty something. I, that's and I started. I think it was about a month before she started. And then I watched my stock just, all my money just went away. I mean, yep. it was $100, but it was still $100 of my money. And I can't I can imagine use shareholders. Bucks right now. Yeah, I can't imagine a shareholder saying, hey, that's this is great. <laughs> well, and that's, that's what I don't understand is why the shareholders have not been more vocal than they have. They um, tried. They tried to split Watsi off uh, last year, the year before. Yeah. Yeah. They right made before. that effort run. Uh, they've been very vocal, actually. And that's the thing. The problem is, is that the vocalization of the stockholders is not being supported by the media until the ship is fully on fire. That's right. the one thing you got to keep in mind. The media is not going to touch on the loud stockholders until, <laughs> where we see with Disney right now, the ship's fully on fire and going below the waterline. Well, now we're going to start talking about all these people that have been saying, hey, look at we got a problem. we got to do something. Right. It's a sick cycle of, um, of a very merged... Um, uh, and I've worked in both sides of it, uh, this very merged um, sphere of influence, which is the corporate and the media, and they get together really well, and one protects the other all the time until one part of them becomes such an embarrassment, they have to be excited Escorted to, out. Save, yeah. Yeah, well, to save the greater whole of the, end right. of the organism, right? Got to cut that toe off, right? <laughs> oh, the tales I could tell on that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, tell, tell some tales. It's what we're here for. Tell us about uh, it. We're here for tales. Mostly related to politics, so I doubt you want to hear those. <laughs> oh, well, let me let me get my pillow real quick. <laughs> yeah, I'm a Canadian. I love now. politics. <laughs> oh, so, man. so Goth, we, we asked this question just before you joined. Um, do you see anything, as a result of this, do you see anything really changing uh, within Wizards of the Coast, the the as far as practices go, as far as anything, it depends. Uh, one of the things that uh, I know you've seen it with Disney, somewhat specifically related to Kennedy, or at least there has been whispers of it. Uh, she might very well have had a longer term contract, but there are always all sorts of you know little caveats here and there in these contracts. Where, like, for example, Disney has a morality clause of all things. If you act in an inappropriate manner, yeah. then uh, they have the option to, you know, terminate that contract, whether you're within it or not. And uh, it's possible that something like that got called with her. Where I uh, guess for, there's a kill fee, too. Then some t in some cases with that, there is no fee. Like, really? you know, if you are... If you are with a company and you shoot somebody, yeah, God forbid, there, there is, there is, that's where these kinds of clauses come in. So you're not oh. stuck being paid. It's extreme, let's, but let's it's not bring Alec Baldwin cases. into this though. Like, let's see poor Alec. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, for example, the case that they were looking at against Kennedy, to my understanding, was that she was being given funds for one project and she was funneling funds to another. Really, so, Kathleen Kennedy so, did something underhanded. I don't believe yeah, it. Yeah, go figure. But uh, that, that was at least the accusation, and it was something that was being looked into. I am not privy to what exactly panned out there. But that being said, if she's overseeing multiple projects with, through Hasbro, then it is entirely possible that she could have been, you know, misallocating assigned funds for different projects and, you know, playing favorites within. The corporate and then that kind of computer to PayPal, yeah, yes, mm -hmm. essentially. So, if something like that happened, then and that was the reason, or they had it and then they didn't have the motivation, but then you saw the situation with Disney where everything is going to hell 
and the shareholders have lost all faith, all of a sudden you've got a situation where, okay, maybe we do have to shift some operating practices. And uh, on a uh, uh, on a sort of an additional note, there have been some systematic changes that uh, Hasbro Corporation has been looking into specifically related to uh, packaging and sourcing. I've read a good bit on that. Uh, most of that just comes into logistics and shipping costs with the increasing costs of uh, gas and therefore shipping. But uh, so I know that they're trying to make at least certain internal operational changes. But as far as practices that would impact quality, that remains to be seen. Hmm. Well, I mean, and I think that goes into part of the decision making for uh, reducing the number of pages in in their physical books, um, as well as attempting to try to push more people to the to the online version, uh, digital version of those books for specific for uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Um, simply put, I mean, digital product doesn't have the same kind of overhead that physical product does. You don't have warehousing issues. You don't have, yeah, you, you specifically know. And, and we'll get into what that little hint is in just a little bit too. Um, but, uh, but you don't have the, the logistics of warehousing. You don't have the, the logistics of transportation or shipping. Um, and I mean, I, even from just a, a global standpoint, I mean, I, you know, I was talking to a guy today uh, about getting some miniatures, um, but he's based out of Germany. And I mean, the shipping on something like that alone, even just for, for a small little, you know, plastic miniature, you know, if I wanted to order one, you know what the, the shipping on just this one little miniature would be from Germany to the United States? 20 40 bucks. bucks. <laughs> it's, it's not, it's not worth it. You know, it's, and, and so I told him, you know, I, I see so it was, it was, um, Give me one second. I'm gonna give this guy a little plug real fast. Sergeant uh, Dan, um, he's good. He's good shit. Epic Epic Miniatures uh, is they're the ones that reached out to me, um, and they if you look them up, I mean they've got you know great uh, STL miniatures for 3D printing, and uh, the the they look really cool. I mean you know it, if you like miniatures, you, you're gonna love these, but the shipping and that that's why I understand why he, he's doing uh, digital. Because you don't, you simply just don't have that overhead to ship a physical like that. And it yeah. totally makes sense to do the digital thing. I can't blame yeah. him for that. I love the physical books just I do too. because maybe because I'm old or whatever it is. But like my son, he dabbles a little bit in D&D &D and things along those lines. He'd much rather use the digital version of it. And I'll admit, I use the hell out of the digital stuff solely because it's easy. It's much easier. Yeah, one yes, iPad's a lot easier search. to carry to a game than 15 books. That's true. Right. And to search through the books in general. If you've got a good search thing, if it's a PDF or if it's D&D Beyond or whatever it is, it is much easier to actually just do the search. But I still want the books and I have them all. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> Sergeant Dan threw you five bucks there a few minutes ago. Oh, I missed that. Oh, thank you, Sergeant Dan. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, and I have to go with uh, with what Bear said too. That uh, yeah, it's she's been sacrificed on the altar of Hasbro CEO. Well, the eclipse was very this. important. It was. We have to make sacrifices, otherwise the demons and giants rise from the earth and eat us all. Watsi is doing what they have to do to protect us from the mystical realms of the West Coast. I've lived out there. It's very. Ooh. They, we should all actually just thank them because they've saved us all. Sure. Give them money. Yeah. Everybody go buy a copy of D&D &D right now to give them money to thank them for saving <laughs> us from the giants what live in the earth. You know, the question is, is it is it going to take another uh, another eclipse? Um, and I'll, 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 I'll show my own photos here. Is it going to take another eclipse to, to see us through this? I mean, she's been banished once through this eclipse. Uh, will, you know, will we, will, will we, we get rid of Chris Cox on the next yeah, one? Will we get rid of Chris Cox on the next <laughs> one. So I, I, I am probably the only person that would speak in defense of Cox. Okay, let's hear uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> the, the fact that the man went to Disney and essentially said, you're making trash movies. We're not going <laughs> okay. to abide by your freaking rules for keeping certain stock. So, you know, go screw yourself. Let's see if another toy company wants to make your stuff. Broken having having the cojones to do that. 
you know, I've got to give them a pass. They're at least, you know, seeing the writing on the wall. One right move does not offset hundreds of wrong moves. That, okay, that but, is this, but here, here, okay, let me ask this. Let me point this out. One, you're right, Bear. One wrong move does not uh, fix all of the wrong move. One right well, that's move. That's what my ex is telling me. So, yes. yeah. so, but here's a question there's now two right moves. We've now seen What's two that? right moves. Getting rid of her and getting and telling Disney yes. to go out yes. of sand? I would argue it? three. Well, possibly three because they they did fix they did resolve the whole OGL issue. So uh, I mean, four then, four okay. then. Okay, what what is your fourth one? Uh, this is going to seem cold, but they were in the toy manufacturing business. That toy manufacturing business has been declining for decades. They endured with the same staff levels far longer than they should have. For the sake of company profitability, they had to do that layoff. And, and that was under Chris Cox? And that was under yeah. Chris Cox. So, so, I so exactly how was Watsy? Uh, how many people from Watsy were let go, John? Uh, I couldn't give you exact numbers, but I know the, the February layoff was huge. I'd say probably upwards of 800, 750, 800. So 750, 800 people yes, in your I most think. profitable division in the corporation get laid off because of your other division's bad choices and keeping people on to make toys? That's, that not, a biggest, good, that's not a win. That, hands down, that was the biggest grumble um, that I heard personally from other people because we lost a lot of good friends in there. Was uh, Hasbro or Wizards was still rolling off of the, the whole pandemic and the 2020 and all the other things. They were, they were doing really well. But Hasbro itself as a whole was doing was it was trash so wizards lost a bunch of people because of it and i get there's sometimes you got to cut a little bit of the fat but that much is not fat anymore now you're cutting really and i i watched a lot of really good people get cut and they're just quality engineers and quality qa people and project managers and all these different people and they just cut them like for no reason most of what i've read on it has uh said that a great deal of that has been related to uh, the toy side of things. So this is the yes. first time I've heard. I know I know that some people from everywhere got laid off. Yeah, But uh, so there's, there's, uh, it was mostly in the manufacturing. There's an old yeah, expression there... that meant as a good thing, but it actually can be a negative as well, like in this situation, which is closer to the bone, the sweeter the meat. And in this case, when you're cutting that close to the bone, you're going to lose some really good meat. And that's what Watsi's done. They've right. lost some truly talented people in really their talented. desire to be profitable again, but not look, you fire one Lorraine Williams and all those jobs can still exist, right? You fire one Chris Cox and boy, oh boy, oh boy. Now you can hire double your staff and pay all those people a living wage. So I will have no sympathy for these corporate pricks. I will have no sympathy for the Crimson Assurance League and their high seas piracy. I will have no sympathy or think, well, you made three good choices, so you guys are off the hook. No, screw them all. They are, they are a cancer and a parasitic entity living inside the organism of Western culture, and they need to be excised. That's my truest feeling on it. Oh, and take the bankers with them. <laughs> leave, but what about the attorneys leave them behind well no because we need someone to be on our to side and, well, no, we need well, somebody we, to hate we can use the attorneys <laughs> that's the thing we can use them it's it's a I think this has been a long time coming a lot of the fans have seen this as a necessary thing I just, I think that, that, and I hate using the term, I hope, but I'm going to say it for lack of better, better words. I hope that we don't see a, a worse situation, uh, fill those, fill that role. I'm going to share um, an image with you because I think it sums up exactly the situation we're in right now. Give me a second here. I'm going to present it to, to you and then you can choose okay. to share it with everybody. I do apologize for the vulgarity in the term. It was not my intention to show vulgarity, but it really does sum up the point. Ah, I see the fuck up fairy has visited us again. Yep. And that's where we're at. <laughs> There's yep. your thumbnail. <laughs> There's the thumbnail, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean that's that's that and that does sum it up. I mean, it's 
what's the lyric in the song? Uh, uh, meet the new boss, same as the, same old, the boss. old boss. That's what's written underneath my channel right now. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's is it really? Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Uh, that that sums it up perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, but we will get fooled again because we always get fooled again, and that's the problem. Well, it's it's because we have hope. Mm -hmm. Hope is a yeah. very dangerous thing. We have hope. We have passion for this game called D and D. And I'm not specifically referring to Dungeons and Dragons. I'm referring to uh, the, the 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 fantasy element of immersing yourself in a fantasy setting. Regardless, could be Pathfinder, could be right. you know Mortborg, it could be uh, you know a, a hero uh, heroic, it could be it could be a, a wide range of different things. <laughs> Please do not like utter the name of my project with all this evil, sir. <laughs> no, 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 no. What I'm saying I, is, I, I got you. I'm just, I'm, I'm using D and D as as like, a general term of role playing, like Kleenex. <laughs> Like Kleenex, like Xerox, like in the UK, they say Hoover instead of vacuum. Correct, yeah. like Kleenex. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's we, we have hope because we have a passion to play something that allows us an escape. At the end of the day, that's what it's all about. It's about providing ourselves with an escape from the hell that we live day to day, from dealing with shitty people, from dealing with... Uh, aggravating traffic, we need a release, we need an escape. That's what, for a lot of us watching, that's why we play these role-playing games. It's to escape those, those torturous days of aggravation. And what is so disappointing is having somebody in a position of leadership that is contributing, directly contributing to that torture directly contributing to the the drama that we frankly just don't need in this industry uh it, or in this hobby i should say i don't want to say industry but in this hobby well i knew the writing was on the wall when mike merles got shifted out of position because of dei wokey nonsensey stuff um and it left me going we're in trouble and mm -hmm. clearly we were, and no, everyone, oh, Mike Merles is the devil. Okay, well, he was the devil. Okay, yeah, he seemed like a nice guy to me. Oh, he chose the wrong side in a stupid online argument? Well, good for him. But he was. But then, a, he's a really good guy. I can, I've met him personally. He is a just a genuine, upstanding character. And now we've got, and I'm going to say some stuff, John, that maybe some of your co-workers won't like, and I do apologize to your former co-workers and Go friends. Go for it. Now we've got D&D &D in the hands of Crawford, who I can't stand, and uh, what's his name? Perkins, who is clearly a fair weather guy. He just blows whatever way the wind's going. He's on <laughs> Team Watsy. Let's, I'm all about it. You know what I mean? So these guys are not good shepherds. The corporate level are not good shepherds. Um... I used to want them to make Greyhawk for 5e, and I'm I, I, on my knees, if I could be right now, thanking the spirits of Gygax and Arnica and Arneson that they never did, because I can't imagine what a shit show it would have turned out to be under this stewardship. Um, sadly, it is what it is. Um, we have a level of insider knowledge as fans and as, as people who appreciate this hobby that gives us a perspective that even movie, and I worked in the film industry for 20 years, even film fans don't get this level of knowledge that we get to have because we're talking to our peers, literally. I can promise you, no one in the film industry thinks you're they're, they're your peer. They think they're better than you. But game designers and hobbyists and guys who write role-playing supplements and girls who write modules and make miniatures, they are our peers, and they see themselves as our peers. Mm -hmm. So we get knowledge that we never get to have in anything else, and that is both a blessing and a curse. But we have to stop being dumb, open-eyed, open-mouthed children running headlong into a field full of hornets because we think they are, everything's on our side. Because at the top of the chain are the corporations. <laughs> yeah. And the corporations are waiting there with a bat with nails in it. They're, they're going to, what's his name, Negan? They're going to Negan us every chance they get because that's how they roll. Sorry, what? I said poor Glenn. <laughs> poor Glenn, yeah. Um, and I will say this. In this scenario. I will say this. If there is anybody that uh, currently works at Wizards of the Coast and you've got additional information, feel free to hit me up on my email, manager at gamemasters.com. Um, 
it'll be completely anonymous. I'll blur your name out. I'll say, claim that the, you know, I, I stole the, I'm going to steal this from another YouTuber. Uh, but I'll, I'll claim that I wrote the email myself. <laughs> um, but if you have, if you darken up their face and change their voice. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I used to work at Wizards of the Coast. Now I, you know, have some information to spill. I mean, you know, whatever I, I, I can make it completely anonymous, but if you do work there, uh, and you have additional information and you want to pass it out and get it out there, I'll take it. Just stop giving money to people who hate you, everyone. Stop. There are tons of amazing indie game designers out there who are starving for your money. Go buy their projects. Go Speaking buy of support. indie, no, indie do developer. Not, do not. We are not doing that. I'm still on my no pimping break. Uh, but head out there and support <laughs> Troll Lord Games. Support I'm not on any games. kind of break. Nice. <laughs> Go ahead, fill your boots. Okay, so so this guy right here, hey, check it out. I actually pointed the right way. This guy right here, <laughs> right there, um, he's got a a. I almost said Kickstarter, but that's not it. It's a backer kit mm -hmm. uh, for a superhero game called Heroic. Yeah, you've yep. got what forty two days left. We are at fifty two days left because I'm stupid and set it up as ninety days instead of sixty days, but that's actually played to my benefit. Then we are forty two days. You're all right. I'm on crack. I'm sick as a dog <sighs> today, guys. I apologize. He was how much nice will have you taken? He was right. Can you post the link somewhere? Uh, I can absolutely give it in the private chat and then okay. Mr. Man can do what he wants with it. Yeah, but basically, right now, um, I have a deep abiding love of the old 80s Marvel superhero game from TSR. It's a great uh, game. I have now interviewed on my channel multiple times people who were involved with it, including Jeff Grubb, Zeb Cook, and Steve Winters. Um, and I have been working on this for about 15 years off and on, and now it's at the point of delivery where I take it, I modernize it, and I make it a little bit, just a little bit different, but I think it plays a little bit better. And so far, the feedback has been that people agree with me. Um, and uh, we're, we're putting it together. It's going to be an awesome project. we got an amazing team assembled, and uh, friends, Romans, countrymen, give me your cash. I need it, <laughs> you know, to pay all these amazing people. If I, Like I've said, if I get a pizza out of it at the end, great success. But none of this money goes in my pocket. But I'm I will have to a, pay taxes on it. I'm putting a link in the uh, in the comments there. Thank you. Um, if anybody wants to go check it out. But, but back to my point, Brian. Go support <laughs> Hold on. Go support. Oh, Hold on. Yep. Yes. Do do support your what he's going to say. Support your the independent, the third party uh, content creator. 100% support I'm, I'm that. There's part. so much awesome stuff out there that is being created by folks like us, folks like you. And Hasbro, it's a billion dollar entity. Or Wizards of the Coast is a billion dollar. Well, I guess by virtue, Hasbro is too. They don't need your money. It may be a fun system to play. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of other stuff out there too. Um, so, Bear, like I want to... Like paperclip the RPG. Don't like paperclip paper the RPG. Do not press play on that video. I will murder you in your sleep. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna menacingly hover over the play button. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. That that helps my anxiety tremendously. Oh, did I click it? No, I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and and yeah. So anyway, so I, that's yeah. I'm giving you a little plug there, but yeah. But, I mean, but okay, but know, back to my point, which is this. Back to your point, yeah. Which is this? There are people out there who love you, literally love you care about you, want you to have fun, want you to play the way we played back in the days before this became corporate nonsense, want you to have as much freedom and control over your games as possible, want you to play the way you want to play at your table with who you want to play at your table, and they are starving for your cash. They need your cash. So every time you go buy another WotC product or another, I don't know who else is the big boys these days, think about how much that money is just going to add into another executive buying another yacht or buying another jet ski or vacationing in Cabo or wherever the fuck Fiji, I don't give a shit, versus that's going to mean a little extra food on their family's plates that week. It's a huge difference. Or and how much of a severance benefit. package that they're going to be exactly. getting when they quit you know, put in a two week notice and quit. 
and this is what brings me back to my capitalism versus corporatism point, which is this, we are capitalists. We are trying to raise capital for the products that we are creating that we want to bring to you to market. They are corporatists. They just want your money with the least amount of responsibility to you that they can generate. Figure out which one you want to support the guy who's fixing your neighborhood or the guy who's planning to bring in a big box store and take out all those old buildings, right. figure it out. Yeah. I mean, we've seen, we certainly in our area have seen our fair share of big box stores come in and wipe out the small mom and pop shop. Um, you know, we, we don't, I, I've been very vocal about trying to support, uh, the, the local game store on my channel and, you know, and, and third party creators, um, as well as other YouTubers. You know, I, I think that there is a big solidarity there that, we, we we can only win from by supporting each other. And I'm, I, you know, I, I'm always for and forever still going to uh, cover D and D products. You know, that's, that is, it, it is the elephant in the room. It is the big gorilla that everybody looks at. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to use that, that as a launching point to celebrate the, independent creator. That's always been my goal. That's always been my aim. And that's always been my target because I'm, I'm not satisfied with playing just one game. You know, I, I like to play a wide variety. I I've likened it before to eating food. Um, and I'll even, like I'll even, yeah, I'll even target it down to eating pizza. You know, I love pizza, you know, but different times. I like different types of pizza, you know, for breakfast. I love a cold vegetable pizza, shit ton of Tabasco sauce spread all over it. That is, that is to me, one of the most perfect breakfasts you could have. I like a good margarita pizza. I like pepperoni and pineapple. Ooh. Heresy. Yeah, see, everybody hates that. I no, love no, 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 I, 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 no. Nothing makes me happier than a nice Hawaiian pizza with extra bacon on it. Oh my god! And, I'm, and I love the, I love the, dare I say it, Canadian bacon. It's not a thing. Pizza. It's not a it's, thing. It's not Canadian, and it's not bacon. <laughs> it's not bacon, and it's not Canadian. Why do you people stand with this bullshit? <laughs> you don't do this. My point is, I like a variety of pizza. I like a variety of games. You know, I, I, I don't have just what. Here's the better part. How many of you, even those of you watching, I want to see I want to see numbers here. I'm going to ask a very pointed question. I want everybody that's in this chat. I want you to, to comment. How many pairs of dice do you have? You don't want to know. I do want to know. That's why I'm asking. Sick. Um, I've got five plastic cases with about 20 sections each plus a couple of bags full so easily over 200 sets of dice at this point easily yeah baby dice so okay we'll use that as as i'm not even gonna say an average because that's a fairly large amount of dice i'm insane uh, but my point is if we only liked one thing you'd only have one pair of dice yep yeah. Like everybody here enjoys a variety. Yeah. No, what, I, in the end, steal them from people on the highway. What? How do you get your D6s, man? <laughs> <laughs> do you go to grandma's house and raid the old board games? What do you do, man? Yeah, Monopoly. <laughs> I, meant to, I uh, wanted to show this one to you. Uh, Pimping the Bear. You can't see them in the light, but these are my game science crystals. They're the only dice I actually use to roll. Everything else is for collecting. Oh, so you don't like variety? Well, no, I just really, you can't see it because of the lighting, but I just love how pretty these are and how the light reflects until I get bored of them and then I'll switch to one of my chess X sets or okay, whatever. Okay, okay. Oh, oh, fair enough. judging fair me, enough. you bearded bastard. <laughs> hey. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, that. so that's that's kind of my point there is, you know, I to, to your point uh, of, of supporting third party mm -hmm. content creators, you know, uh, giving giving your money to those that are hungry for it, not those that are not those that feel like they deserve that they're entitled to it. And I think that's one of the biggest things that has 
uh, really turned me off from her leadership was, you know, when she straight up got out there and stated D and D is under monetized. I, I guess I fail to see it, you know, from a business standpoint, you know, maybe goth and Rome, you, you might have a better understanding uh, from a business standpoint, exactly what she meant by that. If but, your stockholders aren't satisfied, you tell them that about everything. It's just, you have to keep them happy. Uh, in the corporate world, if you are failing and it is by your own decisions, you blame someone and they else. Are just, and you, you either blame someone else, but the problem is that if the sh shareholders keep <laughs> blaming you, you can pierce that corporate veil and you can sue these people independently. Mm. And it is a... It is actually a crime for a corporation to not pursue shareholder wealth. Fiscal responsibility. Yep. They, ha they have a uh, fiduciary duty to pursue profit. Yep. Which and... is a horrible, shitty thing. I like profit. Yeah. No, I, I like, like profit, profit too. But I also like the idea of um, let's get out of the Gordon Gecko greed is good mentality. You know? I mean, if you're making money, you're making money. And that's all that matters. But again, we're back to that 97 versus three equation. And that's where fiduciary responsibility lives. It lives in the three. It doesn't live in the 97. So, well, there, there's something I'm, I want to throw out in this. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Fiduciary responsibility. Uh, we're in a world now that is very different from the world that any of us grew up in. Uh, just financially speaking. Sure. As a company, right now, uh, for example, Bear, how many mm. nations have people who people that have donated to your backer kit? How many nations have those people come from offhand? Do you know? I'd say a good half dozen. You know, even Easily. even thirty years ago, you would not have been able to do that. Oh God, no! All of a sudden, you have entered a world where uh, everywhere is your target audience. Yeah, and. So instead of, you know, slowly growing and expanding into a new market and then another market, everybody got it for free. The moment yeah, the uh, internet, yeah. every, the moment, you know, the internet became a thing and became broadly used for business and you could conduct secure transactions through the internet and people started trusting that, which was a huge problem early on. Uh, you now have something where companies have essentially maxed out their target audience. And they still have to increase those numbers to appeal to shareholders. And right, wrong, or indifferent, without those shareholders, they can't continue to operate. So this is something where uh, I think that this is just a symptom of the current paradigm of, I guess, global trade as a whole, whether it is digital or a physical product. But would you that attribute that to being like a, a, a reason to claim that it's under monetized? I mean, that that's 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 my hang up. That that's that that phrase is my hang up. Yes. Uh, the area where you, you can point to Netflix, uh, they got to a point where they were not getting more people. And so what did they do? They wound up jacking up the price and they generally lost people, but they made more money. It was a saturated and market. It is. And, and that's okay. So that maybe, maybe I'm a touch on the naive side with that viewpoint. Um, I, I do believe that the, that the market is saturated, but I also believe that if you are producing a good product, something that there's two ways to make a product, product that people want product that people need. Do we need Dungeons and Dragons? No, we don't. No. Do we want it? Those of us that like to play mm. it, yes, we do want it. Those of us that don't are in completely indifferent. They don't care. Right. Yes. As, as a business entity, how do I make the individual like Bear want it? The... By, by, by creating a company that goes out of its way to support the people that are purchasing directly purchasing the product that I'm trying to sell. 
And I think that that's where the bigger failing has come into play from Wizards of the Coast. Uh, and, and it's it's I also concede too that it may have been a direction that came directly down from from Hasbro. Hold on, Bear. That uh, that that they're don't that they're not supporting those consumers. They're just pumping out product, yeah. subpar product, sub quality product, in hopes of grabbing more dollars. Okay, Bear. Sorry, I just wanted to. That's okay, man. That was a good point. Well, it's something I've noticed in the last 20 years of my life, really the last 15 years, well, maybe 20 now at this point, mm -hmm. which is this mentality of chasing the market you don't have, right? And everybody's Correct. done comics, mm -hmm. movies, mm -hmm. music, games. Anybody in the entertainment field, for the most part, has chased, they're chasing the audiences that they don't have. Every time they start chasing the audiences they don't have, they start alienating the audiences they do have. And there's only one company in that entire period that I saw not do that, and that was the WWE. Vince McMahon sat back, for whatever you want to say about him now with all the stuff that's come up, but during his stewardship over the last two decades, for sure, he said, I don't care that you think this is offensive. I don't care that you think this is too violent. I don't care that you think this is, you know, whatever, racist, sexist, whatever you want to call it, because the audience that puts money in my bank every year likes it. So I'm not going to lose them by chasing mm -hmm. after you you and in mm -hmm. fact i'm going to gain more of them by making fun of you and as a result they just sold that company to the saudis for a metric shit ton of money yep. Yep. right because he's old he's retiring and he's in all those scandals now it was think very well that. handled very well handled now think think about that versus dc marvel warner brothers disney watsy and these elusive audiences look what, what disney did to star wars and um mm -hmm. uh marvel Indiana look what Jones. they did for them and Indiana, Indiana Jones, Jones yeah. 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 By chasing audiences that aren't their core audience, they alienated their core audiences. And this lesson seems to be absolutely unlearnable by the idiots who run things. Whether they want to admit it or not, Star Trek is not making the money right now. They couldn't sell Discovery to any of the streaming services. They even offered money to get Netflix to pick it up, and Netflix was like, nah, we good. Now, net, when Netflix turns you down, you got problems. <laughs> All their toy company uh, contracts, Playmates, Hasbro, wanted nothing to do with these products. They're like, no, nah, we can't sell these toys. We'd love to make some more Captain Picard and Riker and Kirk toys, but this stuff doesn't sell. We're not interested. And they continue, no matter what, because they've all bought into an ideology. It's no longer about making money. It's no longer about being a corporation. It's about ideology. And that is a toxic brew yeah. for profit. Uh, Star Trek, to be fair, they wound up uh, giving the production contract for that uh, IP to, what is it, Bad Robot? Bad Robot, that's the guys yep. who killed it. Bad or uh, Bad Reboot. Well, now there's yeah. the spinoff that uh, Kurtzman yeah. does. Yeah. yeah. But. but this is the problem. And, like, I'm sorry. And, like, I've had people argue in my face that, no, I'm just being a gatekeeper. And I'm like, screw you. Go watch old Star Trek. And then watch the new stuff and tell me if you don't notice the difference, right? But this is the point. Chasing these elusive audiences, not going to work for you, man. They're not going to work. Those people don't spend money on your product now. Less than 10% of them will spend product on your money after. But you're going to lose 30 or 40% of the people who are currently spending money on your product. Right? And that's not Honestly, good. it kind of comes down to your mission and your vision statement. Like mm. if you have that vision, if you have that mission and you keep following that North Star, you're not going to lose the original people. You can expand. I love the idea yes. of expanding to other things. But when you lose your North Star and you just start going off in some weird direction, yeah, people are going to jump off the boat. They're not going to they're not going to follow you. Well, and, and, and so I think Wizards did that. So as and and I'll, I'm going to use that as a small little tangent to jump in to the successes of of what we as youtubers are doing um you know it, it it would be as if i don't know i just decided one day you know what i'm just gonna start doing videos on nothing but cooking pizza i'd watch the shit out of that well there you go tomorrow I'm, it's pizza masters <laughs> but, but, but that's no, just me but to the point yeah i mean the D, &D fans or the role-playing game fans or right. whatever they may not be interested and, yeah, and I've seen many YouTube channels that have kind of pivoted away and didn't start a new one. They just kind of pivoted to something else. Mm -hmm. And that's not what I wanted. Yep. I no, that's very true. And it, it is, it's it, so if you make action films, 
don't start making period dramas. No matter how good they are, if you're if you're known for making action films, make action films, and then go start a second company that makes your period dramas on the side. That's the way you do it. With me, I love talking about ghost videos and UFOs. Well, my primary channel is about my projects role playing in this industry and in this community that I'm a part of. Therefore, I started a second channel to talk about ghost stuff. You know what right. I mean? Wait, 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 wait. Full stop. Mm -hmm. What channel is that? I'm not telling you. I need to know. Well, t tell me it's, off, it's, off. It's it's in. I'll tell you off, but it's in flux right yeah. now because the, the the garbage I've been reacting to is just, like ghost <laughs> videos have just gone like this. Because I'm I'm into the same fucking thing. Uh, All right. And, and 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 I'm being serious. I mean, I used to have a website called uh, uh, ghostchill.com. Nice. A long time ago, and that's what it was all about was was doing amateur ghost hunting. I was just something I was into and uh, just, I never could make it take off, but I mean, hell, if I could be a part of, of, of some kind of, you know, a channel like that, I'd be all over it. It's just we'll you know, one of those fun things. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll talk offline for sure. Yeah. Uh, the channel is called right. bears cave guys. And though today I put up a video about men and women being nicer to each other. And apparently people didn't like that. Oops. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> oh, I don't God. give a shit. Well. I'm not, I'm never, and I never will do YouTube to make money. That's not why I'm here. Well, and that's that's why you know I, I don't do it either. It is nice to see a bit of income come in because it does help offset a few things. But it, my my goal is not with my channel. It's it's not to be a. It's not to see that it's under monetized. It's not to try to chase views or chase subscribers. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video or this live chat, feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. <laughs> I mean, it's, like it's, it's, you know, it's not that, um, I, you know, I don't like to do, I've been hit up a couple of times to do sponsored ads or sponsored videos, and I'm not a fan of those. I don't like ads in, in, I mean, I could just completely unmonetize everything, you know, if that were the case, but like I said, I mean, a little bit of money does help, uh, for me to cover a few expenses that I do have, um, just in my day to day life, in in the production of this channel, uh, you know, even even paying for this the streaming platform that I'm using, uh, it, it costs money. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's it's I'm happy to see the little bit that it has, but I'm like I'm like you, Bear. I'm I'm not in it to chase down every pocketbook that's out there. You know, okay. I, I've got a good core audience. I've got a good group of people that that hang out in the Discord and we chat to no end about a variety of things. I've got great viewers that come in uh, and and help me do these kind of live chats. And I've got people that leave really good thought provoking comments. Uh, Goth and Rome is 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 one of them. Um, it's it's it's. Uh, for me, it's fun. I, I'm having a fun yes. time, yes. and that's something that I'm, I've I've been curious about. Is do you think with Cynthia Williams to kind of bring it back around to that topic? Do you do you think that she? And I already know the answer to this, but do you think that she's done all of this because she enjoys it, or has it been chasing a paycheck? I think she saw it as a really good opportunity and jumped on both with both feet. I think she started with good intentions and thought she was going to bring new, fresh ideas from the other corporate world, from an Amazon or an IBM or whatever, uh, that Microsoft mentality or that Amazon mentality. I don't think that fits in something. The role-playing game community is very passionate about their products, yes. about their thing. And we thought the Wizards was our friend. We thought wrong, but we still thought that. And when she came in and tried to push these other monetization things, because I get it. You you had mentioned a uh, the must-haves versus the wants or whatever, the, mm -hmm. the or whatever, however you put it. If you're a D&D &D fan, you must have the player's handbook and the monster's manual. Right. And then you kind of need, or you don't need, but you You want. feel like you need. You, you yeah. feel like you need, yeah. But you want the other things. So I can understand from a shareholder standpoint or anything along those lines from monetization. Once you own the books, there's no need to go back and buy anything else. I could open up my second edition game, my books, and just play that game and, and have a fantastic time. Or one of the 
fantastic, wonderful free products, the paperclip RPG for that, and just continue playing that over and over and over and have a fantastic time. But if you wanted to make more money off of it, you would put out more supplements. Whether or not I need those, that's up to me. But right. you you should have those core books. And then from that standpoint, she's going to try to figure out at least, how do I monetize this so that you must have all of these new things? Maybe we'll put out a new edition. Maybe we're going to put out a box set, whatever it is. Or we're going to put out a $1,000 deck of cards that you can't <laughs> do can't anything play. with. <laughs> so, well, so, I, I so get it, but she, I think she went the wrong way. To, to draw a comparison, how many people out there get this passionate over shopping on Amazon? No. Never. For example. Well, well, you know, and okay. that's where she came from. I have another point to make on that, which is yeah. look at the amount of people who work for Amazon <clears throat> and work for Microsoft in our hobby. Yeah. There are a lot of people who work for those corporations who are gamers, believe it or not. Oh, yeah. So you yeah. think they're excited about seeing the culture that they get screwed by every day taking over their hobby? Right. Not, that's not for a second. Right. Not for a second. Well, guys, I think we've said it all. Have we? I didn't talk about the dinosaurs yet. <laughs> well, okay. Tell us about the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are stupid. Grow up. Okay, there we go. Okay. I've said my piece. All right. Night all. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, before we go, though, and I, I'm going to go ahead and start wrapping things up. But before we go, um, Bear, we gave you a good plug earlier. Uh, anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, there's a channel called GM Cody. Go subscribe to it. GM it is an Cody, absolute yes. crime that he does not have a thousand subscribers yet. Please go subscribe to GM Cody. If yep. you are listening to my voice, all 10,000 or so subscribers of Game Masters, go subscribe to GM Cody. You will learn so much about gaming and history. And he's a great guy from Tennessee. He's a working class guy. And he's not an idiot. He's not a redneck. He's not a shit kicker. He's just someone who loves miniatures, war gaming, and D&D. Check him out. You'll love him. And he has good connections to D and D core. I mean, hey, who are some, we, wouldn't, who are we some, wouldn't have had Zeb Cook. We wouldn't have yeah. Larry Elmore. Yeah, it, without him. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, Cody has. Yeah, he he has. Uh, yeah, he's gone above and beyond. So I I, I concur with Bear. You got to check that out. Um, John from Jag Dragons and Flagons, uh, you have a YouTube channel too. I do. I have not created anything recently. I am on a, a computer hiatus a little bit. It's kind of on the fritz. So as soon as I can get that settled, uh, expect new content. But from that, to piggyback off of what Bear was just saying, it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe to a channel. So if you see anything, obviously, in, the, in my opinion, in the RPG community, subscribe to them. It doesn't cost anything. You don't have to watch it. I highly advise you to watch it and yeah. give the thumbs ups and all that other stuff. But it doesn't cost anything. And And alphabet google amazon or uh, youtube they can afford to pay the pennies <laughs> if you if someone can get up to the thousands out or thousand subscribers so and it is i pennies. highly recommend it, it, it is. Is. i mean you're not making anything and if, john i just uh, subscribed to you brother oh uh, well i appreciate that thank you um and and brian if you decide that you're going to start advertising just don't lose your mission and your vision and and that's fine yeah, I'm and okay sitting through that. <laughs> I, I have a feeling that that day may eventually hit. You know, I mean, if somebody dangles a, a you know, a, a large amount, a thousand dollar bill in front of me and says, hey, talk about my product for a minute. Okay. Yeah. Do it. Because it'll make let's, your channel let's, better. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk for three minutes. You want to bump it up to 3,000? I'll do it. Sure. Uh, <laughs> I'd be stupid not to. But, but right now, that's that's not my aim. That's not my goal. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying fair. to have fun and, and I don't want, you know, I, I tease earlier, you know, about giving a thumbs up and subscribing, you know, I only want people to do that if they're going to get enjoyment out of the content that I present. I don't want somebody to just subscribe just because, you know, I, I like to engage, uh, the commenters. Um, you know, I mean, ask, ask anybody that, that comment or take a look at any of my comments. I mean, you know, I, I try to respond to every single one of them. You do. Um, you do every single time. I've put some nonsense comment on your channel. You and I really, I read through heart. every single one of them. I yeah. really do, and and I try to give a good, thoughtful response to them as well. Um, but also, Goth and Rome, um, you've got a pretty crazy channel too. Yeah, I uh, come from the political and business world. So uh, I mostly talk about politics. I talk about uh, current events. 
affairs that are likely to shake things up like and even you know history and pop culture i think my our last video was three weeks ago and on monarchy and how it actually worked because everybody gets it wrong <laughs> yeah but uh we uh the the, it, the videos are done by myself and a friend named colton uh we've worked together for years and this is just how you know just a chance for us to hopefully give our two cents to the public to help them understand a lot of things that, you know, you see yeah. in the world and don't fully understand the effects of. Well, it's, it's, it's entertaining. You know, I mean, there's some deep thought provoking uh, conversation that you guys have, but, it, and, and, you know, I mean, I, I, I do enjoy that kind of stuff. You know, I do enjoy, you know, I, I see a lot of YouTube channels out there that just kind of gloss over stuff um, or, or expect you to already understand what's going on, but you guys kind of delve into the topics in such a way that it, it kind of helps to, uh, uh, explain the situation. And so I can kind of get absorbed into the conversation. Um, and we have a special guest appearance by GM <laughs> and Cody. <laughs> Cody's awesome. Yeah, you. Cody if, is if awesome. You, if you need to test it out, either watch him play role playing games with me on my channel at Zenith Comics Presents or come by for one of our, which we're not doing this week because we had no topic to talk about. And then you proposed this. We came over here. Our uh, weekly uh, Four Color Cafe. You can go see the one with Zeb Cook, Larry Elmore. Mm -hmm. uh, the older ones you go back, you'll find the Jeff Grubb and Steve Winters was recently as well. And Tim Cask. We had Tim Cask on. If you oh, want to yeah, laugh, yeah. if you want to just watch the, o the OSR as a person speaking, <laughs> Yeah. Watch the Tim Cask yeah. interview. It's fucking my face hurt. I was laughing so hard yep. doing that. <laughs> yeah, it was and that Cody, was a good one. And I was a part Cody, of it. Baby. Yeah. And Cody uh, Cody's the one that set it up. Uh I was on that panel of talking and I didn't do a lot of talking, but I did a hell of a lot of laughing. Oh my god. Eh? <laughs> that one was funny. just a bunch of half ass wannabe actors. Oh. <laughs> it was brutal. It's a good one. <laughs> Out of hey, curiosity, yeah. uh, any chance of an Ed Greenwood at any point from anybody? Ed is Ed is apparently very open to doing things like this. Uh, my problem with Ed Greenwood is is I don't give a flying fuck about the Forgotten Realms. So what am I going to talk to Ed Greenwood about, really, at the end of the day, right? I don't give two shits about the Forgotten Realms. So we're talking about it, and we're looking at reaching out to him, and that may be one of the ones where I just speak a whole lot less than everybody else. We've had those where I just kind of go, on my own show. Uh, but it might happen. Sure. We're looking for it. He's on the list. We've got a little <laughs> At that point in time, I'm the overseer, making sure right. everyone stays yeah. within their place. The game master. <laughs> oh, no. That's the game master. It's taken. <laughs> yeah, it's taken. <laughs> I'm the Gen X GM, baby. So, yeah. So, anyway, that, that guys, um, I, that's what I wanted to talk about a bit about, uh, you know, Cynthia Williams. I think it's ultimately, I think it's a good thing for uh, both the company as well as the hobby. Um, I am very curious to see where the hobby goes next. I don't think that if any change does happen, I don't think we're going to see an immediate change because in, in, in something as large as Dungeons and Dragons, as large as Magic the Gathering, and those are the two main IPs that Wizards of the Coast is, is uh, dealing with, they already have a roadmap. They're not going to just halt that car in the middle of the highway and turn, make a huge left turn. You know, they're going to continue out at least this year with, with this year's product releases. And we know that in D&D uh, releases, we at least have the Monster Manual coming out uh, for, I don't know, what, 5th edition revised, 5e revised, whatever the hell they're going to call it, um, that's extending out into 2025. So we know that that road, their roadmap at least goes out to that point. I don't see anything major happening. Now, what I can see, and I'm going to go on a complete speculation here. What I can see is that as we get closer towards the end of this year, I can see them, as they have done in, in, in previous years, they have kind of painted a roadmap for us of what we can expect. And it would not surprise me if somebody in, within Watsi uh, not necessarily her, but a, a PR person 
puts out a dotted map that we can follow. You know, yes. Go ahead, Bear. For me, Watsi needs to do three things. A massive mea culpa, a mm -hmm. massive one. And talk about how they've 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 gone the wrong way and they need to course correct and they need to come and really be honest with the fans and open up with the fans. Two, stop chasing the tourists. Yes. The tourists are not the ones that are making the money. It's the people that live in the town. You know what it's I mean? It's me. We pay the property taxes. Yeah. We got the and it's 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 all of us. Right? God. Yeah, it's and all of three, us. Yeah. Three, I call my my three C plan, which is in the three C plan. There are three things that need to be gotten rid of: Cox, Crawford, and Cunt. But that's Perkins. I, I can't stand Cancer Boy. I'm sorry. I just can't stand him. I'm sorry. If Chris Perkins is watching this. I'm sure you're a wonderful person, but dear God, you grind my teeth. So there we go. That's get rid of those three, and maybe there's hope for Watsy's future. Not going to happen. But hey, what are you going to do? So that's where I'm at. I mean, you know, that's that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm going to suppose is that I think ultimately this is going to do the hobby good. I think it's going to do Wizards of the Coast good. I hope that morale there improves. I think that there and John, you can attest to this. I think that there are some good people that work there that are are have been left behind yes. uh, holding a bag, so to speak, um, that. It, we'll just hope that it's not a bag of devouring um, <laughs> that, you know, I think that they deserve a good uh, for a lack of better terms, a good payday. I think that they deserve a good working environment. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I can't speak to, to the toxicity that, that she created there or allowed to happen there. I don't know if there was a toxicity environment there, but everything that I've come to understand is that, it was an uncomfortable place to work simply because you just didn't know what was going to happen from one day to the next. You didn't know if your idea was going to be dashed. You didn't know if your idea was going to be praised. Consistency. I think that's the key. You know, we need somebody in that's going to care about the brand. That's going to care about the customers, a caretaker, if you will, a caretaker, if you will. And, but I mean, and I, you know, uh, but also somebody that can make a good judgment call on what business is, you know, and that's, I know that's not easy. I, I've, I've run my own business before. I have been a key uh, decision maker in other businesses before, and it's, it's never an easy task. I, I would never begrudge anybody of uh, being so naive to think that, oh, well, anybody can run that place. No, I think it does take a very specific mindset to be able to do that. Um, I just don't think that she was it. Agreed. Agreed. And thank you, John, for the birds. That's been like the best part of this entire thing. <laughs> <I love it. laughs> Sorry. It, no, 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 no. It's the it's, uh, best it's part sincere. of this stream. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, there's, there's, it, we'll, we'll call it uh, uh, what? What is it called? ASMR, oh, audio yeah. sensory. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what for me. This was because I grew up in the country, so this was a little bit of touching grass digitally for me. It's like oh, it's, bird. It, it was that or, that or listening to my kids scream inside. So. <laughs> Thank you for choosing birds. Yeah, yeah. birds. Yeah, birds. <laughs> well, guys, I appreciate it all. Um, we'll call it a night. Anybody else have any final parting words? Bear, what's your I, your go to? Uh, peace, love, and geek, baby. Yeah, peace, love, peace, and love geek. geek. John? Play games, have fun. Thanks for having me. Always. And Gotham Rome? No slogan, still pending. Cartage <laughs> must be destroyed. I love it. <laughs> oh, boy. Guys, until next time, Paris Cross, may you play a game that makes you happy. <laughs> <laughs>